Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to begin Chapter 5, Dynamics Proper. We're going to be looking at the motion of a particle of mass m in one dimension. Okay, so what do we mean by dynamics of a particle in one dimension? It means that the particle lies or moves along a one-dimensional curve. So Newton's equation, in this case, is given by this equation, f equals ma. So what is this s, the variable s? Second derivative of s with respect to t squared. Well, it's the, uh, the acceleration, but s is a generic one-dimensional variable, okay? If we're talking about motion of a particle along the horizontal, it could be x. Motion of a particle vertically, it could be z. Or if we have something like a pendulum and it's oscillating back and forth, possibly it'd be an angle, theta. So this is just a generic one-dimensional Newton's equations, Newton's second law. This is an example of an ordinary differential equation, or ODE. And it's a second order ODE. What order means, the order of an ODE is the number associated with the highest derivative in the problem, highest order derivative. It's two in this case. So Newton's equations are second order ODEs. And it's important to realize that for a second order ODE, in order to specify the solution uniquely, we need to specify two constants the initial position at a given time and the initial velocity or the first derivative at a given time. All right, I want to give you a little bit of intuition about why this is the case. So keep in mind first that Newton's equations gives us the second derivative of the motion. And if we want to compute the third derivative, the fourth derivative, the fifth derivative, and so on. We just keep differentiating this with respect to time over and over and over. All right, now suppose we have a solution of Newton's equations, s of t, and we're interested in the solution near t equal t naught. Okay, we could tailor expand the solution about t naught, and this is what we would get. So what we need in order for this Taylor expansion to add meaning are all the Taylor coefficients. Well, as I just mentioned, we can get the second derivative from Newton's equation, and then we can keep differentiating it over and over to get the third derivative and so on. But we're stuck with the initial s of t naught, initial condition, and the initial velocity. Those have to be specified. If they are, then we have a unique solution. Unique means that one solution that satisfies the given initial conditions, initial position, initial velocity. Okay. Well, that's one aspect of it, but Newton's equation require a force. Okay, and this will come naturally in the dynamical problems we consider, but in this chapter, I want to consider different forms of forces and ask the question, are Newton's equations solvable for these particular types of forces? So the first four, a constant force, yes. A force that depends only on the velocity, s dot, yes force that depends only on the position, s. Yes. Okay, that's great. First four, no problem. And I'm going to 
explicitly solve for the solutions in the coming lectures. But now we can have more complicated solutions. A force depending on time and s dot, a force depending upon position in s dot, and a force depending on position s dot or velocity and time. Generally, for these last three, we cannot solve Newton's equations, in, but there are special cases. What are the nature of the special cases for which we can solve them? Well, now I need to introduce what I mean by a linear or nonlinear ODE. So, start with linear. A linear ODE means that the force is a linear function of s and s dot, the dependent variables in the problem. So in particular, it's a linear function of s, a naught plus a1 of t. It have a coefficient depending on time. a naught does not depend on time. Um, this drawing this, this distinction is important. Depending on s dot, a coefficient b naught plus b1 of t. And then a constant c naught plus a time dependent constant c1 of t. This is the most general linear function. So can we solve Newton's equation for a linear force law such as this? In general, no. We could if a1 and b1 were both zero. That is, the coefficients on the s and s dot term did not depend upon time. These are OK here. So this is what I mean by a linear function f in this case. OK, linear force. All right, so what's a nonlinear force? Easy. It's a force that's not linear, according to my definition. OK, good place to stop. I will pick up with actually solving Newton's equations go through this table and we'll look at the special cases in the last three but in the first four we'll solve them exactly so bye for now